Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are going to spend a little bit of time on the back patio working in the Western urns. I've got two of these back here on each side of the seating wall behind the fire pit. If you remember we were back here, um, my gosh, in the fall sometime, and I planted up some of the Ms. America kale and some violas. Y'all, I'm just gonna be honest, I struggle with those things in a container like this. I don't know if I just like over plant it and then they become root bound, but they just look sad. Um, my Western urn back here, and these are from Unique Stone, so if you're interested, those are that's where those are from. Um, that kale did get a really bad infestation of aphids. I have no idea what was going on there. The one that I'm standing at right here had zero aphids. So I know that that was something that kind of took a hit on that urn. But overall, when I took them out, they were completely root bound. And it certainly is not lack of water because if you're in the South, you know, we've been getting tons and tons of rain. So that it was nice and damp. I think it was just, you know, not enough nutrition, whatever. But I always go back and forth. Like I get so excited about planting pansies and violas in the spring, I mean, in the fall, and then I plant them. And then some areas do great and some areas do terrible. And I see these Western urns from inside the house like all the time and they have just been driving me crazy so today what we're going to do is we're going to try something new last year i just left these things empty and it did not bother me one bit this year though we're going to try a little something different that i can tweak and you know play with as the season progresses now just to, i know i don't have to do this but just to prove that I'm not a complete and utter failure at growing violas in containers, I do want to show you this one that I did. I did not film it. I just um, was out here gardening one day and did it. And um, yeah, they're looking spectacular. So look at this. Here we are in the forest pansy bed. And this too is a unique stone trough that we have. And it is nothing but just that same little viola. And look, look how pretty they are. I have done nothing different to these that I did to the Western urn. I think maybe it's just more soil so they can hold on to the nutrition. They get the exact same amount of sun. Everything's the same, um, but yeah, so there it is. Now, a couple of people I'm probably gonna ask, I'm just gonna and run through right quick what, what all the plants are around it. So we have the Edge Worthia that is right here. Um, it is putting on its buds, if you can see that. Um, it will be very, very fragrant, doing really well. Brenna is in there with some autumn ferns, great evergreen perennial fern. Ascot Rainbow, if you do not have this, folks, um, it's known as a spurge, also as a perennial euphorbia. Folks, one of my all-time favorite perennials. This is a great example of why. Here we are, like a little bit more than a week before Christmas. Look at that, gorgeous. And then look at these candy tufts. This is an evergreen candy tuft, um, all three clumps right there. And this, well, they're all getting ready to bloom crazy um so that's what those are and then some of my favorite 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 evergreens these are yin and yang viburnum from proven winners they are a obviously a beautiful evergreen i want to say these are a type of david viburnums they are mainly for the south so um, us southerners this is one of those rare plants that is just for us gorgeous easy, low maintenance, evergreen shrub. One, like I said, is yin, one is yang. I don't remember who is who, um, but they have gorgeous red stems, beautiful dark foliage, just spectacular plants. I've never pruned these. I may shape them up a little bit to come this spring. There is a little quick fire here in the middle. Uh, Terry from Spring Meadow, she was down on one of her visits and she was like what is that hydrangea and I said little quick fire and she was like that's little and I was like yep that's the little quick fire but you can see how it was the they were growing into each other so I'm gonna have to do a little finagling but in the spring and in the summer oh my goodness they were stunning so anyway I digress on all of that little sidebar so what we're gonna do is I've got some sprinter boxwoods that I'm going to 
temporarily plant in there. So when I say temporarily, I just mean for this winter season. Come spring, they will come out. I'll either put them in the landscape somewhere or pop them back in a container and Somebody can take them home. Probably shouldn't say that, but I do. I do borrow the plants from the nursery sometimes. Um, but I have got Johnny is full of some gorgeous greenery that Brenna and I went around and foraged in our woods. So let me show you what I've got. I'm gonna do a little bit of a spin on what I did for my uh, container on the front porch, the aqua pot. So here I've got two two little sprinter boxwoods. Uh, if you are not familiar with sprinter boxwood, this is a fantastic option. It is a Japanese style boxwood. So that means it is more resistant to the boxwood blight. It does not have that lovely fragrance of a boxwood. Personally, I like the smell of boxwoods, um, like, but some people just don't. So this is less fragrant. The Japanese boxwoods will also turn a beautiful, like coppery bronze color in the wintertime. Some of those up at the nursery, like on the production lot that are really exposed, had already started to turn that little copper look to them. They'll green right back up when the you know when the heat hits, um, but these will do that as well. My I have sprinters along the edges of the patio, but I think because that's the hottest you know spot of my garden and it gets such radiant heat from the patio in the house, they don't turn a lot of that coppery color. So we're going to put one sprinter in each urn, and then I'll show you my my collection here that I have. Right here, this is all cryptomeria. So we have those great evergreens that are behind the dahlia bed, massive trees. And I love what they're doing right now, this time of year with the little, I don't know, is that new growth cones? I don't know what it is. Anyway, it's really cool. So I love that foliage, that texture on it. So we're gonna use that. I went back and forth on grabbing the lower petalum. I wish that my lower petalum was more burgundy but this time of year it is not. These are those massive lower petalums that I have behind the garden boxes, so I certainly can prune on them some. They're also called Chinese fringe flowers because they do these little um, flowers that look like they're shredded. They're not supposed to be blooming right now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then back here in the back, I have got magnolias. Now these are the magnolias that are just growing wild in the woods. So they do not have the brown underside like my little gem does in the flower bed right over there. So, but that's okay. It doesn't bother me that they're not a brown underside. Then we did go prune some limelight hydrangea blooms. We'll pop those in there as well. And then we've got some holly that was just growing again, growing wild in the woods. So I have got quite the collection here. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go ahead and pot up, take out the sprinters out of these containers, fill up the whole urns with the Proven Winners potting soil. We are expecting rain, so we're getting little showers here and there. It started to sprinkle right now, so I'm gonna move with purpose. We're just gonna do these as normal while y'all. Potting soil goes in the container, put the sprinter in, fill in any holes with the potting soil. I'm going to use my potting soil as a holding agent for all the limbs and the greenery. Um, I'm not too worried about putting compost in the bottom. I've done that many times before when I'm doing containers simply because I know this is going to be like a temporary and adding all that extra proven winter's potting soil into that urn will be plenty for these boxwoods. And you can see that they are small boxwoods, which is just perfectly fine with me. It'll give me a little different color, a little different texture. And then as the season goes on, if I need to refresh the greenery, I can easily do that. So we're just gonna get uh, these potted up and then stay tuned because I'm gonna show you what I come left with. I have no idea what it's gonna look like at the end. <laughs> Time will tell.
my friends. So container number one is done. Now <laughs> it's fun, right? Gardening should be fun. You should be having fun in your own garden. Um, and this to me is fun. It's just a little bit of whimsy. You've got those cryptomeria that are hanging over, really kind of softens up the edges. Yeah. <laughs> Is the box with the star of the show? Probably not, uh, because it's getting, it's a little one in there and that's okay. Uh, so we've got the hydrangeas and the hollies and the magnolias back there. So it's just a lot of fun. Who's gonna see this? Uh, Brenna, me, and my family, and that's it. It's not like this is a, you know, a high visibility area, but it certainly does make me happy and makes me smile. So that's all that matters, right? enjoy your garden and have fun out there so we got this one done i will go and do the other one maybe someone <laughs> it'll come out the same i really tried to do with the structure of the cryptomeria almost like a wreath so that the ends i took the, the um, any of the foliage off of the end of the stem and stuck it down in there and just kind of went all the way around so that it has kind of that drapey look we've got a hole right here maybe i can go grab a little bit and stick that in there probably need another limb so that way i can fill that hole in right there um, but all the way over here it's nice and draping looks gorgeous so i will fill in that hole and then we'll move to the other one and it will be done and hopefully we can get it in before the rains come my friend so uh, the urns are done Jerry got home he has been in town having um, some different appointments so do you like the urns oh yeah they look great they look great so he came in the last minute it's starting to rain so he was holding the umbrella and then blew the patio off for me um, but man look at them aren't they pretty I think so you know what and that's all that matters it's my garden and I like it so there we go um, they are definitely not identical. They are more, you know, sisters, not identical twin sisters. And they look great. Now, um, of course, we've got the hydrangeas and the cryptomeria and the holly and the magnolia. And then sweet little sprinter in there. I do know that sprinter is getting lost. It's all right. It does give me a little bit of vertical interest in there. And if they will turn that beautiful copper color, then we will definitely have some interest, um, different color as the season goes on. Now, will this greenery last me all winter long? No, it won't. But I can easily replace it if I want to or if I decide to come in and put pansies in, I can. And like Jerry was saying, I can just leave these um, sprinters in here and then come early early spring like so for me that would be like early march if i want to put some cool weather plants in there and leave the sprinters in i totally can and then once the heat really kind of hits take the sprinters out and then put in like my annual grasses that i typically do that kind of thing um, but yeah so excited with how they look really fun definite improvement over what they did look like with the kale and the violas it is starting to rain, so with that, I bid you adieu. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, stay warm. It is going to be quite chilly. We can see our breath here. And uh, it rained, so it's a good day to go inside. We're having chili for supper, so get, get that going in the crock pot. We're going to have a great day. Stay snuggled up inside, as always. Thanks so much for uh, gardening with Creekside. If I don't see you before, I will, but in case you miss it, Merry Christmas and have a great holiday season. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends. Uh-uh, no, 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 <laughs> no, my fault, Brianna, no, <laughs> you little booger, you little booger.